Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video we are drawing a snake and skull Japanese traditional design. Now if you already know you're going to love today's video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see in future videos. So we are taking two of the most popular tattoo subjects of all time, a snake and a skull, and we're putting them together just like American traditional style tattoo, only we're doing it Daggett style. So let's get straight into today's video by going to the overhead. Okay guys, welcome back to the table. So we're starting off with A3 size sketch paper, a mechanical pencil, and an eraser should we need it. Now, to start this one, we're gonna draw our skull, and then we can add our snake and some background elements. So I'm gonna be placing the skull right in the center of my page, and it's gonna be fairly large, so I'm gonna start off with a large sort of circular shape like this. Now, once you've drawn your circle in, I want to have this guy looking slightly downwards. So I'm going to drop in the side plane of the head by adding in this little circle or oval towards the side. And I want this to be looking across this way. So I'm going to drop a line through the center of that circle and then bring that across the front of the face. Now, actually, I think that should probably drop down slightly more, more along those lines we will draw a center line in for the upward axis of the face here. And then you can basically add in your center line by coming around your circle and coming straight down the middle like this. That will give you a rough sort of center line. You wanna chop off the other side of your ball as well at this point. just to sort of slim the sides of your skull shape out. From here, you're gonna draw lines across the top of the head and across this bottom section to map out the different areas of detail on the face. And then you want a similar distance down to here, dropping in another line. Now from this line, you can curve up to the center of your cross shape here and from the other side, you'll just curve up to the outside of your face. And this is going to give you your skull shape. Now, the way to take this up, we're only drawing the top portion of the skull, is just to erase that bottom line. And I'll just bring that up a little bit, pretty much to the bottom of our circle there. Now, to start mapping out some of the details, we're going to come down to our center line and this bottom line here. And I'm just going to put in a rough sort of triangle shape, or maybe even a love heart sort of shape. And that's gonna tell me where the nose will sit. So just dropping in a rough little upside down love heart sort of shape for our nose. Now the eyes on this guy are gonna sit roughly in here and in here. So you can just start to map those in. I like to do these sort of irregular shapes. I don't like them to be too square or too circular. So just putting in the shape for some eyes and you can play around with this and get your own shape and structure for these. For the other side, we're gonna come up the side of our nose with a little line, and that will come out and forward, and then drop down into our eye shape on the other side. Now, once you've mapped in the basic placement for your eyes, we can start to put in our teeth area here. So just dropping down, keeping in mind that that's your center there, and you're gonna start adding in some teeth. So I like to sort of do a couple of gaps in there as well, but your teeth are gonna be basically these sort of Again, long irregular shapes. I try to keep them slightly more pointed towards the top. And I like to have them splay a little bit. Now this is a style preference. You can play around with this and figure out your own style. I don't like my skulls to look too realistic. I sort of like to give them a little bit more character. So I like to splay the teeth a little bit. For the gap teeth, I'll just come up into like a triangular fashion like this. And then link them in the bottom like that. So we can come up, add in a tooth, and you're basically gonna work your way around adding in teeth using this method. Now, once you've dropped in a rough spot for your teeth, we can start to work on bringing that out into a cheek. So I'll come past this first few teeth here with a line like this, and that can come out, extending underneath our eye here, and then come back towards the side of the head where I'll follow our curve and sort of wrap that line round and back like this, and then you can follow that forward up towards your eye, 
and linking that into your eye socket there. And then bring another line out towards the top and just come forward and flick it back like that. For the cheek on the other side, you're gonna basically do the same thing. I like to just come out from where the eye started, bring out a nice little cheekbone and then drop that down into the teeth. Now, as you can see when I'm drawing skulls, I'm constantly wavering my line and constantly giving like a rough texture. I just find personally this helps to get a more organic shape to all of it and give it that rough texture that a skull would have. And then on the inside of the nose, I'm gonna double up on our lines and sort of add in this little central piece of bone that goes back into the skull. And you can sort of double up on that on the other side as well. So you're adding little bits of texture to the inside of your bone shape here. Once I get to like this point, the top of the eyebrow curve, I like to bring it across the head a little bit over the top of our eyebrow areas. This is where it joins into the rest of the skull, the bridge of the nose there. And you can always add other cracks and textures into your skull. So go crazy adding all the textures and details that you would like it to have. I, I normally leave this till the uh, inking stage. For the inside of the eye, I'll add in this little gap, this little crook at the back of the eye. You know, the inside of an eye socket doesn't go, it's not completely solid. There is a gap at the back of your eye socket, like a little hole at the back of the eye socket. So I like to add those in just for a little bit more of a realistic look. Although they're not anatomically always going to be in the correct place when I do them, I do like to add in something that resembles uh, those little hole areas. And then these are the areas that get shaded around to make it look more hollow. We'll bring a line out for where the eyebrow sits and you can play around with the shape for that again, like it's a style preference thing. So just play around with that and see what you like. And then we'll come around the top of the head now. I like to again add like wavery line and texture to this. Skulls are not always completely smooth. And I like my stuff to have a Japanese influence, as you guys probably already know. Back, I'm just linking the skull back underneath the cheek area here, just by adding a rough line to the bottom of it. Now from here, you've got your base skull layout. It's all about adding little textures. So I'll add little spots like this, just little divots and dips into our skull. You can also add in the uh, cracks into the skull. I'm not sure what they're actually called, but I think everyone's skull has these. They're basically these sort of crack lines where the skulls, uh, the parts of the skull sort of connect through development. But you can add those in and I just make sure that I'm following the shape of our skull as I do those. So, you know, this is curved that way. I try to have them curving in the same direction and same goes for this top one. But you can play around with those and get some different elements so that you've got nice uh, and different details in your skull. And it's all about adding these little scratchy details to it that make it look like a skull. So I'm gonna start my snake in this bottom area here and I wanna have him wrapping around our skull. So I wanna have him looking slightly up in this direction. So I'll add in an oval shape like this. That will give me sort of the top section of his head. And I'm gonna curve a line back, cutting off that bottom area of our oval just slightly and I'll curve that forward and under like this, keeping it a little bit shorter than the top jaw there. And then I'll add an oval at the back as well. This will be like the jaw area that comes out and around. You can add in this little cross section line between the top and bottom line there. That's gonna be like our gum section. So that's the opening part of the mouth there. And I like to come to about, I know this point here, and add in a little oval for my eye, like this. And there's gonna be a little dip just before the end of the face here. So add a little bit of a center line and just come up with a little V shape like that. Okay, now we're gonna start adding in our body. So what we're gonna do is lots of little circles, basically making up a spiral. And then we can widen that and taper it off to give us the different areas of the body. And this can certainly take a few tries and sometimes it will take me a few goes to get this right. But basically what we're gonna do is bring circles back from our head like this in a spiral formation back up towards our skull and I am gonna overlap my teeth a little bit here and then bring that back down and come up and around behind our skull like that. So the body's curving in this direction. 
I'm going to have a little section of body on top of the head, just overlapping the skull a little bit. So I'll start that towards the top of the head and it'll come out over the top of the head and down. And then it'll come out again and back behind the skull like this. So it's got like an M shape to it. And once we add the actual snake body elements to it, that'll look really nice. For the last part of the snake, the end of the tail is going to come out from this side. So it's going to kind of be wrapping up and around the skull and out the back here. And this just takes patience and practice, honestly. There's not really too much to say in terms of how to map this out. I've chucked out or I've erased so many snake bodies uh, in my time drawing because it's really hard to get them exactly how you want them to be and it takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice. Now patience and practice aside, the Ultimate Dragon brush set is available right now and this is going to allow you to draw these long snake serpentine style bodies with ease. Let me give you a demonstration. So we have our dragon snake body tool and our circle body tool. I'm going to go ahead and select our circle body tool and you can change the size on your iPad here. And this will allow you to draw the exact same thing we're doing right now, basically drawing in the circles for your snake bodies and allow you to get really smooth and easy flowing snake bodies with a nice taper on them. So this is an invaluable tool. On top of this, it also comes with over 30 other brushes, including dragon heads, uh, you know, dragon body parts, limbs, and some background elements. So to give you a quick example, we could take something like this dragon head here. I'll scale that back a little bit. And then we can go up and take our circle body tool and we can come out like this and map out the shape of our dragon body, tapering it right down like this. And then you can go ahead and add in all of your limbs to give you a dragon body resulting in a design that looks just like this. And you can create these beautiful dragon illustrations with full body designs. This is only available at daggetdesigns.com.au. Link in the description. All right, now to continue on with our design, we're gonna start by adding in the detail elements of our snake head here. So I'm gonna start this off by doing our mouth, uh, the scales on the mouth. So they're basically gonna be like these little circle shapes and they'll slowly elongate out to larger sort of oval shapes like this as they come towards the back section of the mouth. And then they'll continue coming forward along that bottom line, getting closer and closer to the front. And as they get closer, they're just going to shrink in size like this. Now from here, you can just reinforce that little line in between, add in some little detail lines if you like. That's the sort of gummy texture on the inside of the mouth there. And then we can start to drop in some teeth. So I like to just do these long curved peaks like this. A little bit of gum in between. And another long curved peak on the other side. And then you can drop in some smaller sort of secondary teeth if you'd like. And now I'm going to go ahead and add our tongue. So basically I want to come out from the back of the mouth with sort of a gummy texture just by adding some waveriness to the line. And I might drop that down a bit earlier. So just coming down here, dropping down towards the bottom jaw. And then as you come out the front, you can flick that off and you can make these as long or as short as you'd sort of like, you know, depending on the level of detail you want to have in this. You can come back tapering out from that line and then split that off into two for your fork tongue. And then from there, you can just draw in the other side of your mouth, the gummy part on the other side of your mouth. Now drawing in the jaw and into the face here, I'm basically gonna come out from the bottom of the mouth and follow this shape around like this for the back of our jaw. And I kind of wanna bring that up just a little bit, a little bit higher like this. And then I'll come forward a little bit and I'll loop this line underneath the eye and then up towards the cheek there and that's going to give you like a cheek section pushing up underneath the eye. Uh, for your eye shape you're just going to follow your little oval. I like to just add this little flick at the back of the eye and you can pretty much add in a pupil 
and then as many little rings or design elements you want. It depends how you want your little eye to look there. Coming towards the front of the face here, I like to add in a little nose. So I'll just puff out at the edge of the face and bring that up. And I'll recreate that look on the other side. Uh, just coming down in that same fashion and towards our eye here. And then you can just add in a couple of little nostrils at the front. Okay, now looking at doing the top of the head, we're gonna have a scaly sort of pattern here. So I'll just block off the top of our nose there. And then you can come out and back up and towards center. And then I'll split that back and back down. So I guess this will be like a hexagon sort of shape. And I want this to split down the center. So coming back like this, I'll split that off. I'll come back down and over the top of my eye and connect that line back up. So again, another little sort of hexagonal shape. And I'll split that up and then come across flat at the top like, or slightly rounded at the top like this. And that will give you the illusion of that scale on the other side. And then you'll have another center scale, just curving that around dropping it back in and then coming back to there. And it's really just about following this little pattern and filling in all of your little scale shapes for the top of your head. Okay, now drawing in the sections of our body here. I always like to start by solidly mapping out the shape of my body. So starting at the base of the neck, I'll come back. This will become the spinal line. So this will come up and over. This part of the body will now be visible coming over our teeth and I'll just erase those teeth for now for clarity. So that will come up and over following our spinal column there. This will be belly at the front here. So I'm gonna do a really light line coming back. And then from about this point, it will become more solid again. This will pretty much all be belly coming back to about here. So I'll follow that around solid line and then this line from the spine is gonna drop down onto our body like this, and then it'll come back up and around here. The bottom of the body will just follow along like this. Now, once I've put in the belly, I like to flatten the base of them. So I'll erase the base of my belly scales and then bring them in on a more harsh angle to help flatten them out like this then you can link them up with little curved lines towards the back of the scales. So continuing our belly scales up and around the body, they'll become slightly more visible as we come around like this. And then they'll start to disappear off like that. And again, you just wanna flatten these out slightly. Now, once you've drawn all the sections of your snake body in and your skull is finished, that's basically it for this one. It's time to transfer it over to some watercolor paper or your finished medium paper, whatever medium you're working with, and we'll start painting this one or coloring it in. Okay, so I've gone ahead and transferred our design to some watercolor paper using my fine liners. So I used a 0.5 for most of the line work. I then went in with a 1.2 and boosted up some of these lines around the cheek and around the outside of the head to fatten them up and boost them forward a little bit. And then I used a really small liner, uh, 0.2 to go through and do all the little cracks and details and texturing on our skull. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go over our inks here to start with. So these are Liquitex acrylic inks. I've got carbon black. I've got a gray wash, which is a drop of carbon black mixed down with some water. This is yellow orange azo. I have sap green mixed with yellow orange azo. I've got a uh, pyrrole red, and I've also got a transparent burnt erba with a drop of sap green. And then I've watered that down as well to make a wash color. Along with this, I've got a few different brushes. Uh, these are Taclon synthetic brushes, uh, number five, number six, and I believe this is a number one. And then I've also got a glass of water to help with blending and to wash my brushes out. All right, so as always, we're starting off with our black shading and I'm gonna start with my number five and I'm gonna start off with the body of our snake to start off our black shading here. 
So I'm going to come in and follow along the line towards our spine here, like this. Following that up to about that point. And then I'll take my blending brush and I'll feather that edge out like this. Just get a nice smooth blend on there. Gently feathering it out from the center. And I don't want to do too much black on this side because we're going to need a bit of color on there too. So just a little thin line of black like this. And then with my blending brush, just blending that out. Just getting a nice feathering on it and gently blending it back towards the spine. Okay, once you've done this, come around to the next little section here. Again, coming in with carbon black off of our spine section and I'll follow that up and around behind our skull and then I'm going to go ahead and feather that out and around. I always try to get nice and smooth blends but sometimes it's more crucial than others and with a snake body like this I sort of don't mind if the blends aren't super smooth. Uh, you know it's going to end up being like a pattern on the snake or a, you know, a coloration on the snake. So I don't really worry too much about getting these blends super, super duper smooth. Just feather out the edge and smooth the gray out a little bit as best you can. All right, now there's gonna be a couple of small parts of black shading in the face. A little bit just before the eye here to try and darken things up a little bit. So I'll just blend that down and forward like this. And you can also come in just behind your eye with a little bit of black and just blend that back into the head a little bit like this. Now I'm also gonna turn my page and come into the back section of the mouth just before the tongue starts like this. And I'll blend that forward as well. This will give us a nice smooth gradient from black through to white. When we layer our color over the top of it, that will really look like the inside of a mouth. Now in terms of shading our skull, there's lots of little sections to go over. We're going to start at the base of our skull here, just coming in with some black. And I'll leave a little white gap around the very base of the skull, so I won't be painting that area. And I'll work up from there, so just leaving that little gap towards the back of the skull and then adding in your black. I'll probably bring it up to about that point, like this. Then you can take your blending brush, feather out that edge, and then slowly work that up the back of the skull, underneath the cheek here, and just work it up the back of the skull until you reach that portion of the snake. So this will add like a nice dark area at the base of our skull there. From here, you'll take a little bit of your black as well. Go into this little uh, nook behind the eye here, this little bone structure here with a bit of black. And then again, you can work on gently blending that out. Start with feathering like this and then slowly work on blending that back. This will help create a bit of depth at the back portion of the skull behind the eye there as well. Now I also want to come forward from underneath our snake with a bit of black. Again, I'll be leaving a little bit of white along the top of the skull there. So just bringing that forward a little bit. I'll be feathering that forward and out and then blending down. Now in this instance, I am going for a smoother blend, just trying to get from black through to gray and through to white. So you do wanna be quite careful with your blends here. And you can come down to the other side of your snake here, making sure to leave that little white border, add in a little bit of a shadow like this, and then blend that on down to meet your other gray shading. 
and that will have a nice little shadow effect from the snake body that's sitting on top of our skull. Now at this point, I'm just gonna go in with my black and paint in those inner holes on the inside of the skull. I'm gonna paint them in solid black, so just filling in those little shapes with our solid black color for now. Now while waiting for those areas to dry so that we can work over the top of them, I'll do some work on the inside of the nose. So starting on one side of that inner bridge that we drew, with our black and then we'll feather that out and blend it down into this base section of the nose down the bottom and you can play around with how dark you want this to be coming in from the other side now as well with our black and we'll blend this part forward as well Okay, once those sections of the eyes have dried, I'm gonna spin my page around. This is just to get a better angle. And I'm gonna start layering in some black towards the base section of the eye sockets at the back here. So layering in some black, and we'll be blending this out and forward. So I'll layer it in like this, coming around towards the top. That's the back portion of the eye. And then I'll feather that out and blend it in a circular fashion towards the front of the eye. And you want that to reach white before you sort of get into this main area. Now I've turned my page back around. I'm gonna go in from this top edge with just a little bit of my black. I'm not gonna go in very harshly at all. I'm gonna feather that down and just blend that around in a circular fashion. Again, you're trying to leave a little highlight point right about here in that big open sort of area and shade all around it. This is really gonna make it look like a hole or you know cavity in the skull. Coming around the other side for the other eye here, like this, that top edge, the top lip of the hole there. And then just blending that around in a circular fashion. And once again, I'm trying to just leave that little point of highlight towards the center of the socket there. Okay, from here, we are washing out our brush and going straight into our gray wash. So this is gonna be like a mid gray wash. It's just water and black to dilute it. And we're gonna go in and start adding in some more tonal value to our skull area here. So coming around the bridge of the nose here, there's gonna be some dark values just under here. Can rinse off my brush so I can start working that gray you know, out to a slightly lighter color like this and across the top of both of our eyes. And then you can blend that gray down the side of the bridge of the nose. Just adding in a little bit more gray here and bringing that down and around. Now, as it reaches this point, there's gonna be a highlight on top of our cheek. So I'll bring some gray in on the underside of our cheek like this. And I'll give that a nice gentle fade off at the sides. This will give us a nice little highlighted portion on top of there. I'm also gonna bring a little bit of gray across this top line and I'll leave a little gap between it and the actual eyebrow ridge. And then I'll work on just blending that back with some water. You can go ahead and put some gray wash into your teeth to give them a bit of shading as well. I usually just do the back section of the teeth with a little bit of gray. Of course, it depends where your light source is coming from, but I'm not paying too much attention to the light source on my teeth here. A little bit under the nose and into some of these little detail areas to help fill in some of our textures. Okay, and now you're gonna take your gray wash and you're gonna go in nice and thick over the top of your entire eye section like this. And you're gonna darken up that whole area, just moving it around to maintain that little highlight that's in there. But you wanna really sort of start to darken up that area because you've got all your base layers of shading in there. Now you wanna make it look nice and deep. So we're doing the same thing for the inside of the nose. Got all of our base shades in there. White sort of stands out a bit too much from our base shades. So now you can go in and add your gray values to help darken things up. 
Now, once you're happy with all of your black shading, it's time to wash your brushes out and go into some color. So the next color we're doing is our sap green mixed with our yellow orange azo. And we're gonna start by coming in and doing the plating on top of the head using this color. So you're basically doing this the same way you do koi scales or dragon scales. Uh, you're leaving a little white gap around the edge of each of your scale shapes and then filling the center section in with the color. And you're not worrying about any blending or shading in this one. Just gently filling in those areas of color, making sure to leave little white gaps around the edges. All right, now once you've done the plating on top of the head, you can work on adding in green to the other sections of your snake. So just underneath where we did this black shading, there'll be a nice dark area of green. And then we can work on filling in the back of our jaw, just working around your little uh, oval shapes with your green. Uh, as I get to the back of the jaw here, I'm gonna blend that out a little bit just to give a little bit of a highlight at the back. And so the green lightens up as we come forward onto our face. Now I'm gonna continue working with that green down the length of the body. Now you're gonna go straight over the top of your black and your gray shading using your green like this. And then to get this nice fade effect, we're basically going to blend our green down towards the base or the belly of our snake. And you want it to get to a nice light green before you reach the belly of the snake. Now you're basically following this same method of applying your green and blending it through for the entirety of the rest of the body. And because you've already done your black shading, that sort of gives you the guidelines of where to put down your green. You're just putting it on top of your black and gray shading and then blending it down towards the belly. Now, once you've washed your brush out again, we're gonna go into our yellow orange azo. I'm gonna spin this guy around and we're gonna come into the back of our eye with a bit of this. And then I'm just gonna wash my brush and gently blend that forward towards the center of the eye for our eye color. And then what we're gonna do is take a little bit of red and mix it in with our yellow to give us an orange color. Okay, now that I'm happy with that base color, I'm gonna go ahead in with my number one, my smaller sort of brush with that orange. And I'm gonna go in and paint all of the little scales around the mouth. And as they start to get bigger, I'll leave little areas of white around them, just around the outside line work of these. And then as they get smaller, I go back to just solid orange. And you're also gonna use this orange for the belly scales. So doing this again, the same way you would do dragon belly or any other snake, you're just going in with solid color, but leaving a little bit of white around the edges. You don't have to do this, but this is generally the traditional way to paint snake bellies. And I also just think it looks the nicest aesthetically, especially once tattooed. Okay, now once you've done your belly scales, I'm going back to my normal brush and I'm going into Pyrrol Red. So we're gonna use this to paint the gums on the inside of our mouth here. So just coming above the top front teeth there. And then I'll blend that down onto the teeth a little bit so that there's a bit of pink at the top of our teeth. I'll spin this guy around. We'll come in with red from the back of our gum portion here towards the front. As we get to the front, you can blend that forward to white like that. Come in again from the section behind it and this is going to be just solid red towards the edge like that. And then to do our tongue, I'm basically just leaving a little skin gap between our two textured sections there or the two parts that I have the line work running through the middle of the tongue and then they'll join up at one point in the middle there again leaving my little white gap at the top of my line and then joining up 
and then I'll come through here leaving a little white line until we get to the fork and as we get onto the fork I'm just going to do solid red up into the ends of my tongue okay this next step is entirely optional I'm going to go in with a little bit of that uh, burnt herba mixed with sap green and water for our wash and I'm going to use that in some areas of the skull and this is just to add a little bit of tone uh, and color to the skull so that it's not just a flat gray so adding in a little bit of this color here over the top of my black and gray shading and then blending it out so basically doing this the same way we do color in every other area you're just adding this wash like over the top of your other colors and then blending them out and around okay this last step is optional i'm taking a sumi pen and i'm just going into our snake body and adding in some squiggles this is basically like a pattern that runs along the spine area of our snake so just spots and little patches and squiggles and you're going to run that basically where your black already is along that spine and adding in a pattern shape again this is optional you can do whatever pattern you'd like to do on your snake you don't have to do a pattern at all you can just have a completely smooth colored snake of course if you did the design a little bit bigger than i did you could do scales really depends where you want to take this or hey if you're confident doing the scales a lot smaller than I do then maybe you want to do scales it's completely up to you now that is basically it for this one guys I really hope you enjoyed today's video I hope you like this design and I really hope you guys give it a go I've really been enjoying seeing all of your artwork over on Instagram and Facebook so feel free to tag me in any of your pictures it's at Daggett Designs and that's basically it. Make sure you like this video. Leave me a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in future videos. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.